Hey, Art Nerds! Today we are doing another alcohol marker tutorial. This is a lineless alcohol marker tutorial using Copic markers. I began by doing my sketch with pink color Eno lead, and I am starting by applying a very light blue B000 to the eyes and to her little water bottle. Now, we're doing something a little bit darker skin tone today. As you guys can see off to the side, I swatched out all my basic colors. I really like doing my color swatches right there off to the side because it sort of gives me a better idea of how everything's going to look together. So I am applying E34 uniformly across her skin. And I am doing this in my Blick Studio Sketch sketchbook. I really like using this sketchbook for marker doodles. I find the paper is very reactive and very absorbent. So you can get a lot of layers onto this paper. My only caveat is prepare for this to bleed through. So once I've applied a uniform skin tone color to her using E34, we're going to go in and apply lipstick red, I believe it's E04, yeah, E04, to her cheeks to the tops of her eyelids, to her bottom lip, underneath her chin, where her arm, so the front part of her arm crosses over to the back part of her arm, that sort of place. Once that has dried, we're gonna apply a little domino mask around her eyes using E34 again, and start adding in shadows. I am using my triad blending system to render this little lady. Uh, so each thing I render is going to have three, maybe four tops tones. So I'm going in with a much darker color, E39. I'm adding in shadows and then immediately blending it back out with E34. And that's gonna give us a nice soft gradient blend. If you want a harsher transition, let the ink dry and then apply your color. One of my keys to blending is layer, 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 apply a layer, blend it out, apply another layer. So don't get discouraged. The more layers you add, the softer your blends are going to be. After that dried, I'm going in again with E39 just to add starker shadows once it's had a little bit of a chance to dry. Now I wanna do some lightening up, so I'm going to use E21. That was not shown in the color palette to the side. And I'm just using that to push some of E39, I'm sorry, E34 back a little bit. I went back in with our E04 to add more pinky uh, blush to her cheeks. And then I'm giving her green eyes. So I'm using a very light green and then shading it with uh, G16 and then BG78, I believe. Going ahead and giving the glass of her water bottle another layer. Painting transparent objects is a favorite activity of mine. I really love painting transparent objects. And I'm coloring in her little hair beads and her sandals using, I think it's Prawn E15, I believe. You guys should be able to see the numbers. And then I'm coloring in her hair using E49. So I'm trying to leave a little bit of rim lighting here and there. That's going to help me later on as I add future layers to her hair, just so that I can kind of see where each individual dread is. Then I go over the, the dark brown that's in her transparent glass hair beads with the prawn pink just to kind of set that color back a little bit, push it towards the back of the page. And I'm coloring in the inside of her mouth using a darker red and adding another layer of shading to our pink hair beads and our little sandals. And 
and adding another layer of color to her hair as well using W10. I find that Copic doesn't really have a dark brown, almost black color that's warm. Um, Blick does, and if you use Ranger Adirondack in pitch black, that'll work really well too. But for this tutorial, I wanted to stick just to Copic colors. Now I'm adding another layer of red using my darkest red selected. And going in with 110 Special Black for the last layer on her hair. Now I'm using a wax green, a very, very light green. I wanted to give her kind of khaki, like green khaki pants or putty colored pants. And as I color it, it kind of got away from me. I'm not dissatisfied with how the end result looks on her. But if you're going for khaki, I would say stay further away from green than what I did. And something I really love about this paper is how saturated it can get, how much color it can hold. See, my mistake is when I use this sort of mustard yellow to try and shade the putty color. It swatched really nicely, but it looked kind of funky. So I'm adding in a shadow color with a darker blue violet and then blending it out, just trying to get it into a cohesive sort of color. Now I'm using that same mustard color to color in the straw basket she has on her back. This is a little Lilliputian lass. If you're interested in learning more about my Lilliputian world building, you can check out Lilliputian Living Volume 1 and 2, or read my beautiful comic 7-inch Kara. You can find that at 7inchcara.com or 7inchcara.tumblr.com. So I pushed some of that mustard yellow back a little bit using the colorless blender, and now I'm filling in her shirt with a light blue. I want to say it's stratospheric blue or sky blue, but honestly I can't remember off the top of my head. Now I'm leaving the fish hooks that are attached to her little friendship bracelet woven bandolier. I'm leaving those blank because I want them to be light silver and I need the room on the paper for that silver to go down. So I need to leave the paper white so you guys can actually see that they're a light silver. If I was going in with a darker color, I would have just filled in the whole area because leaving these sort of little islands of color is a little bit more time intensive than just doing a, a full fill. Now I'm going in with one of the fluorescent blues to add a darker shade to our initial blue. And I don't really find that blue to be fluorescent, but I do think it's a nice blue. And I'm adding another layer to her little straw basket. I'd allowed the first layer to dry completely, which is why we're getting such a nice delineation between the two layers. You can actually see the difference between the two layers. As I've said in some of my other alcohol marker videos, I feel like most Copic markers have three tones to them. So you can get about three variations of color from each marker. I went in and added some darker shadows to the dark blue. And I'm still working with that mustard yellow on the basket. For the fish, I did a B00, a B000 fill. And then I went in and added slate blue and tried to push that back. I was aiming for kind of a blue silver appearance like we get with minnows. I don't think I was entirely successful, but I'm not that disappointed. It was an experiment and I learned some things and that's really what matters. I did almost an entire fill with the larger fish hanging from her fishing line and then tried to push it back with B00. I didn't really have much luck. Now I'm using a blue violet to add some more shading to her pants. And since everything's had kind of a chance to dry, I'm going in with the red to add details to her little uh, friendship bracelet. And I'm also using a mid green to fill in the liquid in her water bottle, her little water jar. And I. In my head, it's Switchel, and if you guys don't know what Switchel is, I highly recommend you guys check out J.A.S. Townsend's Colonial Era Cooking Channel. I take a lot of inspiration for Lilliputian dishes from there. And then I use the same mustard color to color in the rope on her little water bottle. And I use a light pink. It's, hmm, it kind of looks like prawn to me. So that's probably the same base pink that I used on her shoes and on her little hair beads. And now I'm using B01 to add further shading to her little glass water bottle. And R39 
to add kind of a woven detail to her friendship bracelet bracelet bandolier. Going back in with the fish and doing little crescent moon shapes to imply scales. And using C10 to add our darkest scales. Now I'm coloring in her fishing pole. I'm using YR14, I believe, which is really more of an orange color, but I want to build my color up. And adding a little bit of cast shadow from the water bottle onto her leg using a blue violet. I'm using E09 to continue coloring her fishing pole. And a cool gray to fill in the fishing hooks on her bandolier. I imagine those would catch on everything hanging out that way. And I used a very light blue green to draw in the fishing wire. Now I'm adding in details on her fishing basket using a brown. And I'm inking in this lineless style. I'm inking using a Copic marker. I'm inking her eyebrows and her eyelashes. What I really like about this style is it leaves me open to inking afterwards or leaving it completely uninked. And I'm using a little bit of the colorless blender to push the color in her eyes back a little bit leaving kind of a lighter tone of color. You guys saw me do that a lot in my Monster Girl marker series. I'm using a white Signo gel pen just to add a pop of highlight here and there. This is gonna be particularly important on the fish because I really want to convey a silvery appearance. I also use it to add bright specular highlights to the little water bottle and to help delineate her dreads. If you guys are looking for more in-depth alcohol marker tutorials, stick around. Make sure you stay tuned to this channel. I have a lot of really great alcohol marker content coming up. If you're interested in learning about Copic markers in person and you live in the Nashville area, you're in luck. I teach Copic marker classes with the Nashville Plaza. So now I'm inking over that lineless style using a Sakura Pigma FB that is a fine brush marker. It is alcohol marker proof, but I really like using it in this way because I don't have, my line art ends up a lot lighter and it's more an accent to my art rather than defining the art. And this is a fun technique that I think brings a lot of liveliness to my marker art. So as you can see, I'm being kind of picky choosy about where I'm opting to ink. I'm really just trying to add some contrast and delineate shapes. And I apologize for my head being in the shot so much in this video. As I've said in other videos, my eyesight's pretty poor. So I often have to get on top of my art in order to see what I'm doing. And sometimes that means my head crosses the camera border. But I really appreciate your patience and I really appreciate you guys hanging out with me today. So basically anything that's kind of questionable or hard to understand, I'll use a little bit of black ink just to kind of delineate it and add a little bit of extra shadow. Adding just a little bit of block black really helps increase the contrast and makes the piece pop more. This and the Cherry Blossom Girl, and I have a tutorial for the Cherry Blossom Girl that you guys can check out. These are two of my favorite more recent pieces, and I'm really pleased with how they turned out, and I'm really pleased to be able to share them with you guys. I hope that you enjoy them as much as I do, and I hope you find them inspiring. Marker art and illustration doesn't have to be complicated to be charming. It can be very accessible, but it does take time and a little bit of practice. And I highly recommend leaving your comfort zone and trying new things.
Okay, so now that she's markered, I wanted to kind of frame her, mount her onto something else. I thought she was way too cute to live in my sketchbook. So I'm cutting her out using a ridiculously small pair of scissors. I'm not trying to do a kiss cut, which is when you cut right along the printed or drawn lines. I'm doing a halo cut where we kind of cut around leaving a little bit of white. This is a much easier technique and I think it adds kind of a charming hand cut appearance to the piece. And to me, she just seems so much more lively now that we've taken her out of the sketchbook and we've kind of trimmed the excess paper. So I have here a collection of Chiyogami paper and I'm just kind of assembling it to see what looks best with her. I have this sort of woven Chiyogami paper that is reminiscent of a net and I thought that would look really cute with her. So I'm using a bit of Japanese adhesive, um, not glue because glue will make the paper warp. I'm using a Tombow tape runner as well just to adhere her to the paper. Now I'm mounting this to a piece of cream colored cardstock. This is gonna give it a little bit more stability. And I'm gonna use my paper trimmer to trim the excess paper so we have a nice little border. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. I